There's no way for you to worship God with a heart that is alive if you have a heart that is dead. And the Bible tells us that spiritually speaking, we are all dead. What needs to happen is this heart, this dead heart, needs to be surgically removed, spiritually removed, and a new heart placed inside. And the only way that that can happen is for somebody else to do the surgery. Just as a heart surgeon cannot replace his own heart, he needs somebody else to do that if he has a heart condition. When we as spiritual people have a heart condition, we need a spiritual surgeon to engage us in spiritual surgery. And the only one that can do that is God himself. Jesus Christ, God sent his son Jesus, Jesus who is God, came to this earth. And he lived for a, for a time, taught wonderful things, but his greatest act was to go to the cross and to lay his life down upon the cross to die for your sins for mine. The Bible tells us that because of our sin, we cannot earn our way to heaven, we cannot earn a right uh, a way into a right relationship with God, and so we need our sin to be forgiven. And the way that that sin has been forgiven, it needs to be paid for, and Jesus paid for it on the cross. We're going to be talking about, the next, the next time I'm with you, we're going to be talking about how that particular act, Jesus' death upon the cross, was followed by his burial and his resurrection and his ascension, that that did something for us that we desperately needed to have. That is, we have been saved to worship. We were created to worship in the garden. That's the way human beings were created. We're not able to worship him now because of our sin. And so the only way for us to be right with God and to be able to worship him is for us to have that new heart placed in us. And that comes when Jesus died upon the cross and then we, by, by, his, by his strength, recognize that we are sinners and we ask him to forgive us and help us to turn from our sin, trusting in him alone to do it, by the way, and then we follow after him as the King and Lord of our lives. And when that happens, we are saved to worship Him. We can begin to worship Him in the Christian context that one day will be restored completely in heaven one day when we get to worship Him like we were created to worship Him from the beginning. But it all comes back to the heart. Do you have a new heart or not? If you like a new heart today, it only comes because Jesus takes out that old one and puts in a new one. It only comes when He becomes your Savior, your Lord. In just a moment, you're going to have an opportunity to respond, give Him heart, so that you can worship Him with great name and with purpose. As I, as I close here in a moment, I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then as I conclude that prayer, if you have a decision to make, there will be ministers down front who would like to speak with you and encourage you to make a decision for Christ if that's why you come forward. There may be other decisions that need to be made. Maybe you just need to speak with someone. Have, have, have someone pray for you. Maybe you're already a believer and you believe that this is your, to be your church family. And we'd like to encourage those of you who would like to become members of our church to be one of the first to get them out of your seat and to come forward. Because, But as people begin to move forward, uh, they can, others will see that you're coming forward and they won't feel so alone if they need to make their decisions. So you get up first and you come as an encouragement to others. Any other decision that needs to be made, our ministers are here for you. So let's go right now to a time of prayer, and then we allow the Spirit of God to draw you here to a time of decision. Let's pray.